Please raise your hand if you recognise this sound. I have to look for hands. Okay, don't say who. Okay. So a few of you who recognise this sound. Let me put it in context for the rest of you. Okay, so a lot more of you recognize who that is now. This is, of course, Steve Austin, the bionic man, the six million dollar man, the man of my childhood dreams, okay? Every Saturday morning for half an hour, I got to immerse myself in the heroic world of Steve Austin. Though looking back, um, the acting is somewhat ham and the heroine so irritating, I'm surprised he rescued her at all. Um, but, however, there's nothing that you can't like about Steve Austin. Today, I want to explore the impact of connecting with our heroes. And so, on that basis, I'm going to give you five seconds. I'd like you to turn to somebody next to you and tell them which childhood superhero was the one that you connected with. You've got five seconds. Here's the thing, though, about those characters. We're seeing a resurgence, aren't we, of Marvel heroes, and I'm really thrilled about that, not just because they make great movies to go and watch, but because I actually think that the world needs more heroes. The trouble is with these fictitious heroes, uh, we look at their supernatural powers, and although we may aspire or dream to be like them, it's utterly impossible. And so we're not really motivated um, to their actions because, of course, we can't emulate them at all. Heroes are often defined by ordinary people doing extraordinary things. A man called Gerard Way depicted that in 1977. And that's often the case. And the great thing about ordinary people doing extraordinary things is that when we look at them, we can be motivated, we can connect with them, because the things that they achieve are in the possibility for us too. So I'd like you in the next five seconds to tell the person next to you which ordinary hero you connect with Maybe somebody famous, maybe a neighbor. So just tell somebody next to you the name of someone, an ordinary person who's done something extraordinary that you connect with. You know, ordinary heroes are really amazing, aren't they? And obviously, this is a TED Talk, and you're probably thinking, oh, Fee's just about to share some really epic stories, something in my life that I could share with you that would inspire you, excite you, and motivate you to do life better. Well, I could. You see, I was once on an airplane where I saved somebody's life. My husband and I traveled last year to a communist country um, where we distributed vast amounts of medicines. There was even an occasion at our dinner table when we invited a convicted murderer around and were able to challenge him to walk away from a life of evil that he'd been really committed to. Now, I could tell you only one of those stories, but I'm not going to. Not today, not here anyway. You see, I actually have a working theory about heroes, and I'm hoping you might be able to prove it later. I think that when we look at heroes who are ordinary people doing extraordinary things, I think they're amazing and they're fantastic, aren't they? We love to hear these stories, but I'm not sure that me sharing mine today would actually make any other impact than you having a little bit of interest in the story and going home and no longer connecting with that, because it might seem out of the realms for you. There's a lot of amazing people that we can aspire to be in our world today. Martin Luther King stood up for his fellow Afro-Americans. Mother Teresa dedicated her entire life to serving the poor of Calcutta. Then we have the historical biblical figure of Jesus, who gave the ultimate sacrifice of his life to save the world. And each one of these characters does motivate people to great actions. Okay, we know that. In fact, there's a lot. There's a whole raft of um, social researchers and psychologists um, who will tell you that when we focus on people like this, it does create a change in our environment. There's a, a woman called Professor Yang of um, the University of Southern California, and she's come up with a phrase that says, it's plausible that by focusing on ordinary people doing extraordinary things, that we could actually have enough empathy with them that it would motivate us to concrete moral action. 
That's a lot of big words, isn't it? Or kind of a messy sentence anyway. In other words, if we focus on these people, we'll be better people. But here's the thing. I actually see an alternative view to this depiction of us being motivated and connecting with ordinary people doing extraordinary things. In fact, I've been doing my own anecdotal research um, just in the Aldi's queue and with my friends and family and even the lady who dyes my eyelashes. Uh, that's true. And um, I've been asking them, are you motivated? Does it impact you when you connect with someone who's an ordinary person who's done something extraordinary? And the answer I've got is a resounding no. And when I say why, they say because I look at people like Martin Luther King and I think, I can't be this person. I look at Mother Teresa and I, I can't be that person. And so instead of connecting with them and being motivated to action, a, lot, a number of people feel defeated and actually create inaction. Has anyone read this book? A few people have. I haven't read this book, and in fact, I'm not going to. In fact, I don't even like the title. It says, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, and it's all about small stuff. I'm going to rename that book. Sweat the Small Stuff, and it's all about small stuff. Because everyday life is full of the minute, isn't it? The tiny little things. They are the things we focus on. So I actually today want to reinvent heroes. I want to reinvent heroes as ordinary people doing ordinary things even in ordinary situations. And I'm going to call these my small stuff heroes. And you're wondering, so what is a small stuff hero if they're not doing anything magical and, and impacting lives? I'm going to tell you. Okay, a small stuff hero has a heart for people. Now, we all have hearts for people, I'm sure, but generally there are limitations to how big our heart is going to be. We tend to only care and have genuine sympathy and empathy with people who we connect with, people we align with, Maybe people who have the same politics or religion or gender or race as we do. People we're related to. We have this little circle. But a small stuff hero embraces people outside their circle. They genuinely care and have sympathy and empathy and want the best for people who aren't in this circle, who perhaps are the unlovable of the world, or maybe are even people who dislike the small stuff hero, their own enemies. A small stuff hero has an ear for people. Now, we've all got ears. Well, hopefully we have. And Hopefully they will work and we can hear. But have you ever been in a situation with a friend and you want to share something with them, maybe some great news or, or some sad news, and you start to tell your story and you get to the end of the story and then the person just ignores everything you said and starts to say something about themselves. Have you had that experience? It's really disappointing, isn't it? I think sometimes I'm guilty of that myself. A small stuff hero not only hears, they listen and they actively listen. They hear what people are saying, they listen to it, and they reflect back to it in a way that makes that person feel that they've connected with them. A small stuff hero respects people. Now, hopefully we all respect a whole bunch of people, but a small stuff hero is very active in their respect for people. They look around them and they see people that admire, people who do things that they feel are, are positive, and they actually let that person know that. They spend their day looking for ways to compliment other people, not just people they know, remember, but the people outside of their group as well. They spend their day letting people know, I appreciate the job you did there. I must send an email to that person and let them know, I really value what they brought to that discussion today. Little tiny things all day long. The last one's my favorite. What does a small stuff hero do? A small stuff hero overcomes evil with good. This is actually a verse from the Bible, and I love it because when we go back to our fictitious characters, this is exactly what they're doing. They're overcoming evil with good. We've got the bad guys and we've got the good guys. Isn't that the story in every single kind of movie that we're watching nowadays, okay? But the small stuff hero goes a lot further with overcoming evil with good. The small stuff hero is somebody who's humble. Somebody who, when wrong is done to them, okay, will always offer forgiveness, even if that person doesn't ask for forgiveness. A small stuff hero will be humble enough to say, I'm sorry, when they know they stuffed up and not a week later either. A small stuff hero, when someone shouts at them or is terse with them, doesn't reply with the same, but they share a kind word to diffuse the situation. A small stuff hero, when they're driving to work and they get cut off at the roundabout, they don't put their fist up, they smile and wave, and realize that we've all done that at some point. I certainly have. This is my idea of a small stuff hero, and I want to tell you about three small stuff heroes. Growing up with my four children, and they're all very close in age, we had on our dining table a jar of questions. It lasted about two years. And at tea time, at the end, when everyone had finished, someone would pull out a question, and we'd go around the table answering it. And this night, the question said, who 
is the most influential person in your life? In other words, really the question is, who have you connected with in such a way that you want to be like that person, or they've motivated you to be like them? And as it went around, it got to my 10-year-old son. And you could expect maybe a sports hero or maybe a teacher. And he said, after a little bit of thought, Auntie Betty. Now, you don't know who Auntie Betty is. She's not even his auntie, OK? But here she is in the picture, this lovely little old lady who used to come and help out at our church kids club every week. She did the juice and the biscuits and just generally milled around with the kids. She wasn't an upfront person, but she loved those kids and they knew it. She got down on her knees and she spoke to them. She remembered week by week, oh, how did your soccer match go last week? She had genuine care and compassion and those kids knew it and they loved her to bits. She was the most popular person in our kids club. He was so motivated by her small stuff heroism that he wanted to actually emulate that and mirror some of the ways that she treated him too. I was actually a small stuff hero myself once in an Aldi's queue. Gotta love Aldi's queues. All sorts of things happened to me in Aldi's queues. I had just had a really exhausting day at work. I was emotionally and physically drained, desperate to get home and put my feet up, read a book and have a hot cocoa. And I'm in the queue and I'm the next person. Fantastic. When I notice the guy behind me has got less items than me. Not that much. I mean, I had about 20, he had 10. So I wrestled. Well, not with him, of course. And um, in the end, you know, good got the better of me. And I turned around and I said, would you like to go first? And he said, thank you. And he went in front of me and I thought that would be the end of it. And then he turned around to face me. And I saw he was tearing up. He actually had tears coming down his face, this grown man. And he leaned in close to me and he said, this has been the very worst day of my life. And that small act of kindness has given me hope to carry on. I'll never know what lay beneath those tears. I've never seen him since. But I know that somehow I was a small stuff hero that day to that man. Here's a small stuff hero closer to home for me. This is my husband. The fact that we've been together for 30 years uh, qualifies him well enough to be a small stuff hero. Uh, that's for sure. <laughs> um, but he is so much more a hero to me. When my youngest of the four went to school, we discussed what I would do. Would I go back to work as a psych nurse? What would happen? And I really felt a call in my life to go into ministry. And I talked about it with my husband. And he said, yeah, go for it. And you know what? For 14 years, I worked in a voluntary capacity full time while he was the only breadwinner with four children and a mortgage. And there were times when we didn't have enough money and we struggled to pay bills. But he never complained and he never challenged and he always supported me every minute of the day. Some years into our marriage, I got very sick and actually took a few years out of life with treatment. And I couldn't do a lot of everyday stuff. And he never once complained and he never once got mad that he had to cook and clean and put the washing out and fix the kids. He supported me every moment of the way. He's the introvert to my extrovert, which means that he often has to accept that at the dinner table there will be many people, maybe sometimes 50 people, seriously. I love parties. And you know what? I know that he would much rather be in the shed stroking his Jaguars. And that's cars, not cats, OK? <laughs> For those of you who don't know him. And yet, he accepts that, and he never complains, and he allows me to do all these things. He's the small stuff hero in my life. He's a rock to me, and he helps me be the person that I am today. So you see, I'm wondering, with all of this, if you can help me with my research, thinking that ordinary people doing ordinary things in ordinary situations are small stuff heroes that we can really connect with and that will really motivate us to be small stuff heroes too. So I'm going to ask you three questions, and I want you to put your hands up if any of this is true of you. Please put your hand up if you've ever connected with a superhero in a way that's meant that you've been so motivated that you have been able to become a superhero yourself. OK. Would have been interesting if someone had put their hand up. OK. What about number two? What about these ordinary people doing extraordinary things? Seriously, have you ever connected with an ordinary person doing something extraordinary in such a way that it's actually motivated you to be an ordinary person doing something extraordinary? That may have happened to some of you. Has that happened? Yeah, we've got a couple of hands up here. Three, four, five hands up here. See, truth is, most of us are really ordinary. I'm looking at you. You look pretty ordinary, I'm telling you, okay? I mean, you know, no word of a lie here. So what I want to do now is put your hands up 
If you've ever connected with a small stuff hero, you've been on the receiving end of some small stuff heroic acts and it's motivated you to be a small stuff hero to someone else. Is that true of any of you here? Wow, thank goodness for that, okay. <laughs> so you've, you've ratified my thoughts here. The ordinary people doing ordinary things in ordinary situations every day intentionally is really what this is all about. So my challenge to you today is be a small stuff hero. Thank you.